Hey, everybody. Oh, hey, Jack. Can you close that door for me? How you guys doing? Let's see. Wow, we've already got some people here. So I guess I will just uh, lay into it, huh? Uh, oh, hey, look at that. I'm going live. Shroom Arila says, first, well, welcome for being first. I get to see your lab and beautiful teams. Yeah, that was uh, that was a picture of Jackie and Laura. I don't, you guys haven't met Jackie yet, and I don't know if he ever wants to be on or not. So he said he would. So if you guys ever want to meet him, just let me know. We'll, we'll see if we can get him on. Uh, I am sorry. I'm going to butcher your name, man. Sri Kanth. Well, hello to you two. I really hope I said your name correctly. What's up, Yagdrasil? Caleb, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Slog, everyone. Who has the pressure go uh, cooker going right now? Me. I have one right there in the other room. It's a uh, All American 75X. And just sitting in the lab next to me. Uh, let's see. Farmer Matt, greetings to all. Get ready, everyone. It's almost time for the Mossy Maven podcast. Maven, what does that word mean? Jack, you know what Maven means? Me neither. I'm going to look it up. Maven. Maven. Oh, no. Definition. Maven is an expert or connoisseur. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that big dumb. Uh, let's see. Your new bag size you. Henry, I don't know what that means. Uh, you want to know what bag size I use? I use the Unicorn XLS-A. It's a extra large bag. We do 12 pounds in it, <clears throat> roughly. I mean, it, it shifts a little bit back and forth, but uh, but yeah, we do about 12 pounds in our, our uh, of substrate in our bags. <clears throat> What's up, Tenno? Andy from the UK, welcome. Finally on for the start. <laughs> Future Rocket City Mushrooms here already got sales. Hey, Josh, congratulations! I like that name too, Rocket City Mushrooms. You must be from Huntington. I think we think we've talked. I've been down to the Rocket Center down there. In fact, I've got a picture of Ben and I uh, as little elementary school babies. I think it was our fifth grade field trip. My Ben and I are with my grandfather in a picture. I'll have to bring it in sometime. And we're right there standing in front of the Rockets. That's what I was trying to say. What's up, Jeffrey? Abed, hello. Jamie? What's up, Seth? All right, man, that's no worries. If you're in and out, well, I'm sure I'll try to like – we don't hear from you we got a question for you i'll make sure to let uh try to keep reaching out to you huntsville okay good just inoculated some spawn today with your liquid culture well great that's good news skill god good luck with it i hope it does well what strain what did you get I, I don't actually know what strains you got just based on your your screen name there well greetings from macedonia well thank you great greetings from east tennessee man that's pretty cool I mean, we're all like all kinds of international today man Hello from Tampa, Florida. Welcome. What qualifications do you need for your mushroom business? Microbiology. Um, so uh, what, what do you mean qualifications like for me to hire you? Because just come and show me you're a competent person. Um, if you mean what, uh, what qualifications do I have for growing mushrooms as a business? I grow mushrooms and I sell them. I don't have any other qualifications. I went to school for microbiology for one year and then quit. So that was pretty much it. And I didn't even take microbiology. I just took biodiversity. Everything else was just basics. Uh, other than that, you know, you need a business license typically to sell, depending on what states you're in. Every state, every country is going to have a different set of rules and regulations. Um, I would suggest before you start a mushroom business to really run numbers, 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 numbers. And don't worry, I am taking you guys at heart. You all asked for a video on the business side of mushrooms, and I have started working on that already. So that is coming out soon. I don't know when. Don't hold me to anything. I've got a lot going on personally. Um, so there's just a lot of things taking up my time, which is why I want to do live streams. Live streams are kind of low bandwidth for me to do because I can just rapid fire answer questions, and hopefully they're very helpful for you guys. But it's a way for me to produce content for you all and help you guys out without having to do – Videos up to my standards. And I like doing videos my way, so that's why I do them that way. Uh, hey, dude, great to see you. I don't know if you already talked about it, but how did your love for mushrooms start? Um, that's, that's a good question. 
that was ages ago. <laughs> so one could say it was whenever uh, I was a kid and my brother and cousins and I used to pick up puffballs and throw them at each other. Or I was enamored with puffballs when I would sit there and squeeze them all the spores. Uh, I used to breed spiders when I was in middle school. Go out there and like get house spiders and garden spiders and stuff and breed them and keep them in jars and stuff and feed them. So I've always liked creepy crawly stuff. So it's kind of just a fit. But if you mean like my most recent, oh my gosh, the chat's moving fast. I'm going to have to speed this up, aren't I? <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, Jackie, you check out. It should be Samantha or Ben. Oh, it's probably Ben. Okay. Um, let's see. So, okay. Thank you. Um, oh, you got to go to work, huh? Yeah. All right, man, take care. Uh, do you need us to close the gate or you got it? You need us to close the gate or you got it? Okay. Um, so as far as like my love for mushrooms goes, uh, the more, most recent love of mushrooms, I lost my job in around 2008. And when I lost my job in 2008, I started, um, working, um, different jobs. I went to college, went to, uh, for micro started, uh, read a book. Um, first I watched a video called six ways mushrooms can help save the world by Paul Stamets. Then I bought his book and I read it. And after that, I started just producing mushrooms and I just fell in love. I mean, the fact that you can take a piece of tissue so tiny and you can grow millions of pounds of mushrooms off of it. And like the raw product productive power and capacity of mushrooms just being so exponential, it just blew me away. And then thinking about all the, the things that we can do with them and people have done, they're just not economically feasible yet. I don't know. I just kept falling in love. So um, they just kind of stuck. And that's pretty much the way it went there. So uh, how are you going to do my first monotob waiting to try your mushrooms? Got the bulk pack. Hey, thank you, Eric. Thank you for supporting us. Um, let me know how the monotubs go. I haven't seen my mushrooms grown in a monotub yet. That'd be great. What's up, Afonso from Portugal? Uh, for you to start your own business. Uh, Jamie said, oh, oh, for you to start your own. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I hope that my answer helped you, Jamie. Um, if it didn't, just let me know and I can go into more detail. Uh, thanks, Jeffrey. I appreciate that. Yeah, Aaron, absolutely. I'm, I'm doing a video on business side for sure. Um, and then, I'm, I mean, it's not going to be the greatest thing ever because nothing I ever produce is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> but uh, I will do my best for you guys to make sure it's, it's worthwhile. So. Uh, Caleb says, I made some spawn bags from all the varieties in your warm weather mushroom pack, minus the wood ear. Inoculating the master's mix bags today with them. Hopefully they take off fast. Well, a lot of those will, man. Um, man, that warm weather pack, I love it. And I don't know when you got it, but it has recently been updated with some pink oyster. That is my, I've tried a bunch of pink oyster and I've always found pink oyster to be garbage. And this pink oyster just blows my mind away. The flavor. People talk about that bacon flavored pink. I've never found it. I've never believed it. And then uh, Angel from Two Angels Mushroom Farms out of Chattanooga told me where to get this strain. And I, I, I was like, okay. And I tried it and I've trialed it. And man, it does have that bacon t taste. Like it blew my mind. I never believed anyone. So uh, that is down on that on that as well. It should be listed separately uh, as for people who want to get by themselves. But man, that strain just, I have never believed anyone <laughs> that bacon flavor. And I was wrong as usual. Um, how often do you change your all American pressure sterilizer water? Uh, also do you use distilled, got your mother, a pearl, fat man, poplar, king pearl oyster and king blue oyster. Awesome skill. God. Um, I don't use distilled water. I just use regular water and every now and then I'll do a run with vinegar in it. Um, it's just tap water and I don't change it out very often. I, I mean, it's, you know, um, Hey, thank you, miss, uh, Mr. Thompson. Um, thank you for the support. The uh, uh, sterilizer water doesn't need to be changed very often. It, it stays, um, it just recirculates and it, it you know, you re-sterilize it over and over and over again. So if it starts looking dingy or nasty, like it's got grain water mixed in with it, I do uh, pour it out and try it again. But, you know, once every two or three weeks, I change it out maybe. Where's the best place to get soy hulls? Uh, typically your local farmer's market. Uh, mine come from a mill called Faithway Milling. And typically, if your co-op uh, is in that network, they can get it shipped to them freight. So there we go. Um, let's see. We'll have to game against them. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely would love to. I'm hardly ever on right now, man. Things have been so busy in my personal life. A lot of stuff going on. So 
just, uh, you know, the way it is. But uh, I do look forward to playing a little bit. My sons are, my kids have been taking up more Xbox time than I have. How can I export Oyster to you from India? Uh, Shubham, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> typically, if you're sending me like an Oyster culture, um, you can list it as a commercial fungal sample. And that usually gets through customs really easily. Um, like if you're just sending that to me now, if you want to send me bulk amounts, I don't know how that works because at that, si at that time it's not sample sized. So um, I'm not sure how, how to do that. Um, how far out are the consultation sessions book? Uh, Jacob, typically people can, can hire me for a consult with, within a week, uh, sometimes two. Um, I have certain days that I take off no matter what. And uh, if you're talking about mentorships, like they have consultations, in-person consultations are usually about a month out because I've either got to fly somewhere. Uh, if you're coming here, you can uh, book it much earlier. Uh, mentorships, I'm, we usually have, when we do a mentorship, people usually bring, there's usually two people at a time. Uh, I do have one month, I mean, one week where I think I have almost 10 people coming in for a mentorship and that's going to be a crazy week. Yeah. Jackie's over here looking at me weird. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna be a lot of work for you, Jack. <laughs> oh dude, Drew, I guess what? I'm about to, to make a 55 gallon drum sterilizer. Hey, that's great, man. Just be careful. Don't pressurize it. Do you guys see that fly? Am I just going crazy? Mm, missed it. Um, Congratulations, man. Like that'll, that'll change things big time for you. Even a 55 gallon drum. I think we used to be able to fit, uh, 15, 20 bags in, in each one of our 55 gallon drums, <coughs> 12 pound one. Sorry guys. I've got a sinus infection and double ear infections. Um, been tested for COVID. I'm negative, but, uh, with a sinus infection, it just won't quit. I actually finished my antibiotics. I think I'm going to go in for another round, just like I did last year. Hey, from Hungary, what do you think about sawdust spawn for pasteurized wheat straw? I think sawdust spawn's great. Now, you don't get your supplement with uh, your sawdust spawn. So I pref when I was doing straw, I always preferred grain spawn because grain spawn, if you spawn really heavily on straw, you can get a supplementation rate of like 20, 30 percent just by spawning heavy. And you don't have to worry about it going bad because it's all right there in the grain. And if you use oats... Oats have the highest nitrogen content of almost any grain that I can think of. So that makes a big difference in your yields that you're going to have. And I highly recommend that. Uh, what's up from West Coast, Canada? Great vids. Very educational, bro. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Evo. I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, what's up from East Tennessee? Mushrooms rock. I agree, Jason. How long do LCs usually last in the fridge? Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, honestly... I don't know how long an LC lasts. I, I used to think a few weeks and then I thought a few months. And the next thing I know, I found a couple of syringes that were sitting that I bought from Lenny Rockwell that were like a year and a half old and I used them and they worked great. And then I found some of mine that were like eight to nine months old and they, I used those and they worked great. So, and they was, those were sitting at room temperature. I don't know. I, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, every, I feel like every time I say something about mushrooms, they just turn around and prove me wrong. <laughs> right? I shall be sure to watch your business video. Sending love from the UK. Your answers helped amazingly. Okay, awesome, Jamie. I'm glad I, I could help. So the UK is going to be different, obviously. But, uh, you know, just check what your local regulations are and then state regulations. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys call them states, but whatever they are. Um, when was the pack updated? I bought mine on August 24th. I've, did you get a pink? Because if you didn't get a pink... Then it, it was it was close to that time. Um, I don't know when we updated it, but if you didn't get a pink oyster, then it hadn't been updated yet, and it should be updated now. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I, I can't check the date right now because uh, I'm in the YouTube studio, but I can check it later. Um, can I come work for you for a week for free to learn more instead of a consulting package? Uh, Matt, no, sorry. I don't take free labor. Free labor is labor that has to be trained. It is not free. Um, almost everything I do requires me to train you. So uh, we actually have people that come in for the mentorship. The mentorship is people coming in for a week and working alongside us. Now, they're, they spend their time 
in part going from lessons um, to whatever whatever they're wanting to learn to bouncing back and forth with working in, with different people to get a feel for what they're doing. So they spend days working in production, days working in the lab with me. Um, you know, I just did one where I did almost no lab work with people because the guy had already done a lot of lab work. And so I just kind of explained things to him. And then after that, he did production. We talked to a lot of personal stuff. We talked business. We talked um, a lot of things like that. But uh, um, yeah, I don't think um, uh, I don't take on free labor. It's, it's just not free. And I, I appreciate the offer. I understand it's coming from a good place, but it's uh, it's we have tried it and it, it didn't really work. So it ended up costing us money. Uh, but you can get a mentorship if you want a week-long mentorship. Just uh, email me and uh, you know through the website, and we'll set up a mentorship. We are trying to get mentorships up on the website so people can just book them. Hello, how much time can an LC agar or grain spawn jar stay on shelves after pressure cooker, but without inoculation? Light version. <laughs> and what temp condition, light or dark? Thank you so much. So slog slog. Uh, LC, like I said, can sit out for. I mean, I, I've had LC. I usually just. I try to always have liquid culture jars that are sterilized, but not get not inoculated, just sitting on my shelves at all times. That said, they usually only last two or three weeks because I always find wild mushrooms I'm wanting to clone. So like I just cloned a pheasant's back. Um, I just cloned chicken of the woods. That was wild. I cloned a couple of oysters. I cloned a warm weather lion's mane. A lion's mane that was fruiting in that terrible heat we were having. And, um, Oh, I don't remember what the next thing was, but uh, they, they it can last a long time. Um, pretty much anything. Now, grain spawn, uh, substrate, that's just usually harder to keep clean for a while. Agar, I usually just uh, um, sterilize uh, the agar, pour the dishes, put the dishes back in the sleeve that they came in sterilized, and then reseal it, and they last a long time that way. So, you know. Um, let's see. So Andy says, at Jamie Flatley, where are you in the UK? Just in case no one has seen that. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. So my chat had frozen, and apparently you guys have been talking this whole time. And I was like, man, why is no one talking? And it just loaded. So I'm going to try to hit this and catch up. When you second fruit king oysters, do you cut a new square or just leave it like that after harvest? I never cut a new hole ever. It is double the labor. Go play among us. Um, okay. Uh, Andy of the Shire, Link, Lincolnshire. You guys are cool with the Shire names. Daniel says, hello, I want to, you to, I want to ask you, I tried to make an LC of shiitake mushroom by injecting a tissue into a sterile four to one dextrose and maltodextrose solution, 20 grams and 500 milliliters water, but is it, but it doesn't grow. Please, any tips? Daniel, I'm going to need a lot more information than that. Um, what does it look like right now? Is the water really cloudy? Was it cloudy to begin with? Um, four to one dextrose and maltodextrone, um, sounds like a good mix to me. Um, if it's not growing, sometimes you may be stirring it too much. Maybe let it just stop stirring it and allow it to sit until you see growth. When you see visible growth then start stirring it. I found that to be very helpful with things like hen of the woods, chicken of the woods, things that don't want to take off. Uh, I had to do that with a shiitake. I had to let it sit for four weeks in liquid culture before it began to acclimatize and start growing. I knew you were a maving, a mushroom maving. Keep up the good work, brother. I'm uh, here in North California starting my own mushroom company, one sport at a time. Hell yeah, man. Congratulations. Uh, Herefordshire. Herefordshire? Herefordshire? I don't, I don't know. I successfully used your liquid culture recipe. Thanks for your videos. I'm looking forward. Happy mushrooming. Happy mushrooming to you, Henry. Thank you. Is it just unable to make LC out of shiitake or just my fault? So it, it depends, man. Like uh, So that Chinese shiitake that you get out of the grocery store a lot of times, I have found it to be very difficult to acclimatize to liquid culture. I have it now, and it's going to be listed on the website very soon. But, man, that thing was hard to get it to grow in liquid culture. I don't know why it didn't take. Um, but, yeah. Hi, my second family. I love you. Hello, Ibrahim. Welcome. Love you too, man. I don't even know you, but I love you. Can you sterilize grains in a drum sterilizer? Is it only for pasteurizing? You can do usually one generation. So what happens is do your pressure cooker. Um, do your, your pressure cooked grain. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever generations, right? Then you can do some grain in your atmospheric steam sterilizer. 
Um, it's really just a pasteurizer, but it's an ultra pasteurizer. You can do that and then expand your pressure cooked grain into that um, atmospheric steam pasteurized, the ultra pasteurized grain. You can usually get away with one generation and then go to fruiting blocks. If you try to do two, three, four generations of ultra pasteurized grain, it will go bad every time I have ever tried it. So just, you know, are you doing tours of the farm in the coming week? Um, not really, um, Carrie. I, I mean, if, you know, if people call me and sometimes I'll, I'll allow it. Um, right now we try to keep people from coming in and out constantly. Um, you know, we're trying to, to make sure we're following CDC guidelines on a lot of stuff just so we can stay open and have our employees here. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Uh, you know, we, we just don't do a lot of that. Now, we do take mentorships. We do on-site consultations. I do classes for people. I do private tutoring. There's just all kinds of stuff that you guys can do with us or whatever you want to do. Sir, please tell me how to export oyster button, mush oyster button mushrooms and it's spawn from India to America. Well, Shabim, I've already told you, I, I don't know. If you're talking about, um, for one thing, you might want to take your caps lock off. That's actually considered kind of rude. Um, the, uh, I, I know maybe, maybe you can't help it and that's fine. And some people do that when, you know, they're having a hard time seeing. So I understand that too. Um, all of that said, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know. I've never had to import stuff to America. Um, so, sorry. I wish I could help you. Um, hello, Andrew. Danny in Portugal. Where are you, Afonso? Oh, okay, so you're talking to Afonso there. What kind? And hello, Danny. What kind of agar media are you using for morel mushrooms? I don't grow morel mushrooms at Ram. Um, I've cloned them sometimes for people, but uh, the people that bring them in, and I'll make a bag of spawn with it. But I almost never keep it on hand. Um, Hey, Toasty, why are you retracting your messages? Have any restaurants ever asked you any question that might hinder your ability to sell them? Also, when you target restaurants initially, what percentage would you say you end up buying from you? So I've gotten really good at targeting restaurants. So I would say that I've got like a 90% success rate, nine out of 10. I've, I've only been refused like two or three times. I don't have that many restaurants, particularly right now through COVID. I lost maybe half my restaurants, but I'm doing the same amount of business through half as many restaurants because of the takeout delivery. So like restaurants that were only ordering two boxes a week are oftentimes ordering four, six, eight boxes a week. Um, and I've got like a, some that are very heavy hitters now. So I have had, I've got my restaurants with fewer in number, but same amount of, of uh, product moving. Um, have they ever asked me questions that might hinder my ability to sell to them? I don't know what kind of question that would be. I'm always incredibly open and honest so if they say, are these organic, you know, no, they're not organic, but we don't spray them with any chemicals because most chemicals that would hurt them would hurt us. Um, you know, I, I don't know, like, uh, I really can't think of anything that would, would keep me from selling to them. So maybe you can come up with a, a, a example question and I can answer that. Andrew, still. Andrew, thanks for coming on. Do you have a regular schedule when you come on? I don't, Julie. I really would like to, but my personal life is so just like crazy with everything else. And my business, I've got like, a nice schedule going now, but I am trying to get everything like house clean and yard taken care of. Um, everything that's like, kind of slipped. I mean, you know, I haven't done hardly any weightlifting uh, this year. So like just trying to get everything sorted. And when I have a schedule on both sides, then I'll be able to have scheduled live streams. But right now I'm trying to do them on Fridays. Just noticed that you were live. Wanted just wanted to come and and tell you to keep up the good work. Love you and your wife's videos. Love from Sweden. I know she is part of Sweden. She is Antonia, and thank you very much uh, for for that. I would love to visit Sweden and Norway one day. That sounds like it would be an amazing place to go. Maybe one day we'll meet up with you. And yeah, she's part Sweden. In fact, I'm part Sweden. Um, so according to the DNA test, you know. <laughs> Uh, last of bacterial contamination on my oyster mushroom spawn. Please suggest lots, maybe. Please suggest to me how I can make a good quality zero contamination mushroom spawn. Uh, sure. So if you go watch my how to make uh, spawn videos, those will tell you. Um, I don't know that you'll ever make zero contamination. I've never met a grower who has zero contamination. Uh, contamination is just part of growing mushrooms. 
Um, it's like just like it is farming contamination, you know, tobacco mosaic virus for tomatoes and et cetera, et cetera. That's just that's just part of farming. You just got to fight it. Get it. Get the number to an acceptable level. That's all you're trying to do. Hey, Andrew, how would you do a sterile procedure if you only had a small glove box for clean work, grain spawn and plates? Flame sterilizing after sterilizing after disinfecting with ISO is a no, no, right? Yeah, I blew up a box one time. Um, now, we'll say that I had holes cut in my box and a fan that constantly blew air through. Uh, I used bleach within the box, um, though I preferred alcohol, and I would keep my flame outside. So I would flame sterilize my scalpel outside of the box, slip it into the, my hand and back in, and then work in there. And what I had was we had a little vacuum pump and a little vacuum HEPA filter to blow air through the box. It was ugly. It was loud. I had to wear earplugs when I worked. But it worked. Um, that said, yeah, you don't want to mix flame and alcohol. Any, you don't want to mix alcohol uh, or flame with anything that's flammable in a box, in a closed environment. That's very bad. Uh, bleach is a good, good way to go. Uh, sometimes you can get away with, uh, um, uh, uh, oh, my gosh, peroxide, but peroxide is not that good. Alcohol really is the best way to go. Uh, if you work it, the way that I have been talking about a lot here recently with syringes and needles that are already pre-sterilized and disposable, uh, you can almost work in your kitchen with no HEPA filter at all. In fact, I am working on a video that is the kitchen lab, basically a HEPA filterless lab. And I know that I actually know that Tony from Fresh Cap already did a video on that. Um, I think it's a very good video. Um, I had the idea before he made the video. And I wish I had made it <laughs> because he beat me to it. Tony, you beat me. <laughs> but that said, uh, I've got one coming out as well. So um, you can, by using uh, needles, liquid culture jars, liquid culture lids for your grain spawn, and then straw, you can easily go, you know, like crazy. You can produce spawn very easily. And then you can use bulk pasteurized substrates. Uh, if you go pretty low in your supplementation, you don't need to have a filter to keep them clean. Hey man, long time, but I finally found the time to get things started and got some king and blue expanded out and put to agar. Thanks for all the videos. Yeah, man, thank you for stopping in, Bearded. I feel like it's been forever since I've seen you. Uh, Toasty says, Mossy, I can't get soy holes where I live, but I can get alfalfa pellets. Do you know how much alfalfa I could use and how much hardwood pellets? Um, I think it's 16% uh, alfalfa and then the rest is the hardwood fuel pellets. Um, I think I had someone use 20% one time and it was a bit rich. So 16% is probably the better way to go. Um, oh no, no chat. Don't slide. Stop it. Growing some King blue and golden from you coming in. Great. Great. Darian. I'm glad to hear it. You treat that King blue like, like it's uh like it's family now. What's better, hardwood fuel pellets in wheat bran or alfalfa pellet for oyster? No access for soy hull. Uh, you know, Zoltan, I think you should try both, but uh, I think the alfalfa pellets are easier to handle. And so because of the labor, even if they weren't quite as productive, I would still use those. Um, that would be the way to go, I think. So, Hey, Dr. Jerkface. Yo, yo, yo. Hope you're well, my good man. I am well. I hope you guys are well, too. Um, let's see. Julie says... Generally, how far apart are your flushes? I just harvested my first King Blue Oysters from your LC. They are amazing. Thank you very much for, for uh, saying that. Uh, when I, Can I expect my next flush? Thanks <laughs> for all you do. Well, you are impatient, girl. Um, typically, you, uh, let's see, about every 10 days. So if you, usually a bag will stick in my room for two weeks and it will flush twice. So you shouldn't be waiting long. You should see pins in just a few days. Daniel, you're very welcome. Darian says, does a lid for LC jar need a gas exchange or will just the... No, you need gas exchange. Syringe filters are for the gas exchange. In fact, I've done a, some small trials using a aquarium pump, uh, pumping air through the syringe filter. And oh my gosh, you have to do two syringe filters. You can't just do one and pump air into it. Um, but doing two syringe filters, one for the air being pumped in and one to allow the air out, and my growth, maybe I shouldn't be telling everybody that, but my growth rate has exploded since then. Um, so my LC just like hyper drives through the, the grain doing that. And I'm setting up a system to do that with all of my grain masters. So that's going to be cool. 
Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of scared to start a mushroom business in Belgium. Oh, I bet. It's kind of hard to find special mushrooms where I live except button mushrooms. It scares me to think that there might be no demand for it. No, I think there's probably demand for it. What I'm thinking that you're probably facing is heavy regulation. I don't know much about Belgium, but I know the EU has been very unkind uh, to business as far as regulation goes um, in some ways, maybe not in others. So, you know, before, before you you know tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I know a lot of mushroom farmers in Europe and they do have a lot of regulation. They have to follow a lot more than we do here in the States, even like people in California, uh, which is basically Europe. Um, well, Western California is basically Europe, but I think that you've got demand. Um, if the Scots Irish of East Tennessee have demand for mushrooms, then I about guarantee you, uh, you Dutch do. Is Belgium Dutch? Is that offensive? I don't know. What is the vertical spacing of your fruiting room shelving? I think it's uh, 10 inches. And maybe 12. Uh, one second, guys. Gotcha. Um, uh, I've lost the chat again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Are slants just the regular agar formula? Uh, yes, but with, uh, they are, except they have typically the addition of more hardwood fuel pellets and, and a little bit of soy in them. And I'm thinking I'm going to start making like sugarless, just agar egg with wood and soy in it. I, I've never liked this idea of storing our cultures on sugar when enzyme blindness is the very thing that makes our mushrooms go bad. Or strains. I pasteurize my wood pellets, no supplement, directly in a 70 micron bag with 176 Fahrenheit tap water, and I'm growing shiitake lines, etc. So far, no contamination. Should I be worried about the future? Uh, so I know some people who do that, and uh, during the summer, they tend to have large contamination spikes, like everyone does. Um, and then in, uh, later on, they, they don't. Now, I will say there's a few farms that do that. I don't recommend it. The cook has been uh, far better. Um, the cook has been far better for uh, sterilization or pasteurization, rather. The water bath method, so you do you put 176 degree water in it, but it, well, the moment it hits the sawdust, it starts cooling. Um, and you're trying to sterilize the sawdust, right? So it doesn't stay at that temperature for very long, is my, has been my experience. You're very welcome, Shulman. Hey, man, how can I tell the difference between... Bruising and mold. I, I got Contambra. Um, so, between bruising and mold, you talking about on the mycelium? Yeah. Mm, you must be doing something that bruises blue. I, I'm not sure. I have their liars. Mystic mushrooms, who is liars? And you have what? Did I say something that you're answering to? Huh. I have access. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, who have I talked about that would be a liar? I don't think I answered any questions for you. I have access to all the mulch I could want, but they don't separate out hardwood. How important is it to just use hardwood substrate? It depends on the mixture. You can have softwoods in there. You can have resinous woods in there. But, you know, it's going to be, uh, if you don't know the mix, it's going to be a crapshoot. That's, that's really what it just comes down to. Video idea, kind of. Um, all you need to know about name of mushroom species. Video series about each of the most grown species. Mainly, how do you grow it? Temp, humidity, and time for each stage. Okay, I like that, Louise. And, of course, your take on each one, like some sort of secret. <laughs> Thanks for videos. It's the most clear content around. Hey, I'm glad that you, you to hear you say that, man. I try to make it as simple as I possibly can, um, which gets me in a little bit of trouble because there's a lot of people that want specificity. But, um, thankfully, we can get more specifics here, and then the videos can be a lot more, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, general. How many watts lumens do your lights have? Uh... Yep, don't remember. Sadly, you don't say that in your lighting video. I have a 800 square feet fruiting room and try to figure out how much lights I need. So I, I don't really know. Um, 
I, I never knew, actually. I don't think I've ever known. I do remember that I need to go back there and backlink those lights in. Uh, since I am an affiliate, it would be nice to get paid for people going and buying grow lights on Amazon. So I'll, I'll definitely get that link back up there. Uh, maybe I can ask Robin to do it for me. Regarding their questions, do restaurants ever inquire if you have any certificate? And thank you, Yagdrasil, for, for referencing. That way it gives me an idea what's going on because my brain is mush. Uh, regarding their questions, do restaurants ever inquire if you have any certifications to sell or anything of the sort? I know you don't need such things. I just tell them no. No, I don't have anything. I don't need anything. Uh, mushrooms are in the state of Tennessee. Mushrooms are regarded as produce, just like tomatoes or anything else. So if a tomato farmer doesn't need it, I don't need it. Um, let's see. You're a rock star. I'm talking about your wife. You're the roadie. <laughs> Fair enough. She is the rock star. Anyway, have you ever grown snails over here? Apple snails used in fish ponds and taro patches. I have, Lance. Let me come back and I'll answer that question for you. There we go. A little better light going on. Um, yes, uh, I, you, I grow uh, mystery snails. Mystery snails are actually a type of apple snail. Um, I can't have actual, like the apple, apple snail. Can't have that in the state of Tennessee. It's illegal. Um, I really want the giant aquatic snails from like the African giants, apple snails. That, I mean, like to eat a snail, a snail steak would be awesome. But uh, can't have those either. But the apple, the uh, mystery snails are actually very tasty. They make very good escargot. Um, they just have that little trap door you got to take off. Um, let's see, Julie. Oh, you're welcome, Julie. Yeah, absolutely. Utilize, uh, Jeff says, utilize jars actually though, may change for the 55 gallon though. And also maybe linking it to two other 55 gallon drums for a total of three. Yeah, that's what we do. We built a drum sterilizer and then we piped the steam over to another barrel and then another barrel and then out a window. And those worked great. And we could use those indoors all day long. Um, it's when we moved to the trough that we could no longer do it indoors. So Yagder still says capitalism. It's what makes America great, England okay, and France terrible. <laughs> no one take offense. It's okay. I agree. I'm, I'm a big fan of capitalism. It has definitely been good to me. Hey, Jesse. I just talked to you, I think, via text just a moment ago. Have you uh, anyone... Oh, sorry, Jesse. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hard on reading it. Have you or anyone you know <coughs> explored USDA organic labeling? Yes. Um, I have not found it to be worth it. I have compared numbers over and over again of if we have the label, how much money can we actually get off of that? And the truth is you can't really get that much more per pound of mushroom and still have the same wide reach that you have. So in my opinion, unless you're doing medicinals, there's no reason to use organic mushrooms. And even then with medicinals, I don't think there's much of a reason. Uh, let's see. Chat just keeps living. When you suggest what you suggest to make mushrooms spawn, one liquid culture method, two solid culture. Um, I prefer liquid culture these days. I used to be a big fan of uh, solid culture, but I much prefer liquid culture these days. I've been considering getting a bagger from you guys. Do you have an estimate of how much it would be shipped? So we shipped one to California for two hundred and thirty something dollars. Um. We have a company that will tell you, you set it up, and then you email me the label. I print the label off. I slap it on the pallet, and we go. And they've already picked up. They're aware of us. Um, so you're talking like $1,500 for the bagger. Actually, I'm sorry. Ben just increased the price. So um, it's $1,750 now because valves have gone up. So is that's all. That is not labor at all. That's not profit. That is purely that $250 price increase. Is purely valves. So, do you wear a mask when you? It's still worth it. A bag every six seconds, twelve pound bag. Yeah, still worth it. Do you wear a mask when you harvest your mushrooms? Uh, yes, we we wear respirators. Absolutely, N95. Uh, or P. Actually, we use P100. Sorry, we use P100 for cartridges. How long does LC syringe last at room temperature? Uh, so, Mike, I said that earlier, actually, but uh, um, I don't know, man. I've, I've had one set out for a year, and it was still good. Um, I've had more than one set out for a year or longer, and it was still good. So I, I don't really know what the 
I always tell people a few weeks and then I tried that and I was like, man, I don't even know. <laughs> a few weeks is just my guess. Uh, how long does contamination typically take to show up on master's mix and incubation? Typically it shows up very fast. Now, if you have bacterial infection, it may not show up so much in the uh, visual as it will the, the olfactory. So smelling it, that's an uh, easier way to go. Um, yes, bruising on the mic. Okay, so liberty side, uh, liberty side. Don't think I like that name, but um, the uh, unless it's something else. But um, bruising on the mic is going to be uh, hard to distinguish if until you can develop the eye. And a lot of times, the way you can tell that is if you're doing it through the bag, is that you can rub the bag, and if it's contamination. When you pull back on the bag, it will stick on the bag. And if it is bruising, it will stay on the mycelium and not get on the bag. That's usually the best way to tell. Um, what CFM rate would you recommend for an inoculation room? Do you worry about CO2? So you mean incubation or do you mean inoculation? Because inoculation, don't really care about CFM. Uh, incubation, I mean, whatever a household fan will run at, you don't need much. It can be pretty high CO2. I don't worry about CO2. We just don't work in incubation for very long. Uh, we're just in and out. We don't sit in there. We don't talk in there. We don't, you know, we just go in and then we leave. You're very welcome, Quasi. <coughs> <coughs> oh, this talking's got my throat itching from the sinus infection. Excuse me. <clears throat> I may not be able to do a, a three-hour live stream today, guys, like I've, I usually do, just because the more I talk, the more of the congestion starts moving. So what is the uh, – uh, Jake asks, what's the vertical spacing of your fruiting room shelving? Oh, you've already asked that, and I've already answered. It's about 10 to 12 inches from top to bottom. Basically, you just want to be able to fit the bag in. That's it. So I think it's actually 10 inches. What do you think about growing 3782 shiitake on pasteurized wheat straw at 10% spawn rate? Will it work or add? So I've, a lot of people have tried it on straw and it did not work out well. I've not seen anybody be able to produce it there. It's, it's mainly a block strain. What camera did you use for the ones of mushrooms growing from pen to fruit? Thanks. Uh, I use a Canon 80D. It's uh, just the OS 80D. It has a time, it's, you can just set time lapses in there. I have an external power supply. It looks like a battery slips in, plugs into the wall. So I can take multi-day time lapses. Uh, every morning I'll come in, turn it off, change the card, you know, put a new one in. Then when I leave work, I would replace it. All about them enzymes. If possible, please explain more to those who aren't aware. It might be a good discussion point. Now, are you talking about uh, which enzymes? Uh, like, what, what are we talking about here um, exactly? Are we talking about the enzymes the mushrooms produce, enzymes in the wood, enzymes uh, for, I, I don't really know, medicinal compounds? I'm not sure which where you're going, though it sounds interesting. It sounds very interesting. Hey, Andrew, hope you are well. Uh, I mean, pretty well. We'll get you, like I said, sinus infection, but other than that, I'm good. Um, what's your typical incubation time for some of your species? So mm, I would say... Most of my heresiums are fully incubated in a week. Um, most of my oysters are two weeks. My slower growing oysters are three weeks. Um, shiitake is typically eight to 12 weeks, depending on the strain. And my taki, I have some maitake that is six months old um, that I'm just now putting in the grow room. And that's mainly because we started packing that pre-COVID in preparation for COVID. And then we've just been fruiting it. Um, and I, what happens is it doesn't really do much. And then whenever I put it in the airlock where the air conditioning is, it starts to pin. And as it pins, we move the rolling shelf into the grow room. Love you all so much. How do you, much do you usually do consults for? There's a film project I'm trying to get organized soon. Ah, dang, that was an interesting question. Give me a second. Film project I'm trying to get organized soon on time-lapse mushrooms growing. Um, so consultation, my rate is $200 an hour. Uh, I have a one hour that you can do, a three hour that you can do. If you want to do in person, I do in person. Um, if it's, you know, I can do it hourly by that way. Or if you want to be with me all day, we can just cut it down, um, you know, and I'll, I'll hang out with you for the week, you know, that kind of thing uh, for a reduced price if you're interested in that. 
Um, <clears throat> but it sounds like if you're just wanting to know how to like do time lapses and things like that, then, then you're not, uh, you're not going to have a lot of problems um, that we have to go over. It sounds like you're just wanting to know a few specific things. So maybe just the one hour rate would do well for you. And thank you for the love, by the way. Love you too. Put the bags together in a container so they stay at pasteurization temp for about two hours or so. They fully cool in about 24 hours, after which I inoculate. Um, let's see. Put the bags together in a container so they stay at pasteurization temp for about two hours or so. They fully cool in about 24 hours, which I inoculate. I mean, if it's working for you, it's working for you. Um... That to me sounds like something that I would just be like, no, I, I wouldn't try that. But maybe if you're trying it and it works, that's the way to go. Hey, Lance, you're welcome. Toasty. Andrew, I got an idea for content. You can make make mycelium art or mycelium crafting. From what I heard, someone made substrate in the scape of a canoe or chair with reishi mycelium and they work. Yeah, I've, I've seen the reishi canoe. I saw, uh, was her name Kate? Was uh, out paddling around in it. So that was pretty cool. Um, just popped on, wondering if you could give some info on the Venetian. If someone has already asked, just skip and I'll rewatch the video. <coughs> no way's asked yet. Um, the Venetian is like an Italian oyster. It's just my Italian oyster. And to differentiate it, I called it a Venetian because I've never liked, you know, I've always liked Venice a lot. Um, all those canals, right? But um, I just liked it. It's softer. It's got kind of a, to me, it's got kind of a root beer smell to it, which is the only one I've found that has a root beer smell to it. Um, it is one of the better producing strains, though it is slightly susceptible to bacterial blotch. So make sure you keep your rain spawn clean and your humidifier clean. Uh, that said, typically if you see blotch on a Venetian uh, or even Italian, what you can do oftentimes is pull the pins and just let it reflush. And your second flush will be bigger than a normal second flush, that kind of thing. But I grow it all times of year. About how much spawn do you add to your 12 pound bags in cups? I don't know in cups, but one five pound bag of spawn can do 50 12 pound bags of uh, substrate. Guys, give me one second while I close my uh, uh, pressure cooker. All right, um, Jake, I hope that helps. Rob says, Douglas fir pellets and alfalfa pellets are abundant here. Thoughts for oysters and shiitake substrate? Uh, so <coughs> maybe, uh, like I said, 16% um, alfalfa to whatever rest is uh, wood pellets. I think it's hardwood or fir. Uh, for shiitake, you want to do wheat bran instead of alfalfa. And that, I do that at 40% wheat bran. Do you think there's a decent market for medicinal such as turkey tail and reishi, at least fresh? I know tinctures sell. Kind of curious about people just buying the shroom itself. I mean, so reishi is uh, a lot easier to sell than turkey tail. Um, I take it to restaurants during Christmas in particular. And a lot of times they'll do um, reishi and a little bit of hot sauce and a dark cocoa, and they make like a hot cocoa, a reishi hot cocoa. So not only is it, um, not only is it taste expensive because the reishi gives it that bitterness, um, but it's also medicinal. And a lot of people really like that. You know, hey, it's Christmas time. Don't get sick. Drink some reishi. I don't know what the legality of that is, but that's, uh, that's something they do. You could probably do something similar with turkey tail, but man, turkey tail is just rough to drink sometimes. And I don't know what it is. No one else seems to have this problem. But when I drink turkey tail tea, I start seeing like visuals and stuff like the walls start to breathe. It's weird. I don't know why that happens. It's it's literally just turkey tail. Um, and I don't know why it does that. How much do the baggers weigh? Uh, Seth, I'm not entirely sure. It's like it's 200 pounds, 300 pounds, something like that. I mean, it's just an empty box, really. 
Hey, Andrew, how many times can you transfer LC to LC before you should reset the strain with a needle biopsy clone? By the way, so I, I always do it. If you're talking about needle biopsy from agar um, is what I typically do. Um, I never do my liquid culture more than three times. I transfer one time. The first, you know, with from tissue goes in there. That's my first transfer. I expand it once, expand it twice, done. Three, three times through liquid culture, and I don't – I reset every single time. I know a lot of people say that you don't need to. I think Lenny said that he doesn't really ever see a need to. Um, a lot of people other don't. I don't know. I'm just so worried about enzyme blindness that I just is it's so easy to reset. I mean, why not just reset it? Reset it when you as soon as you make your last jar, put the other one up for re, put it make it for reset. Go ahead and reset it. You've got a fresh jar and that stays in the back. You know, you just stir it every day. But you pull from your last one. That's clean then you know that you can pull it down and start using it. And if it's not clean, you know, you just reset it. And that gives you plenty of time to remake your liquid culture. So you've always got it available. Where do you sell the bagger? I couldn't find it on your website. Uh, Fred, you have to contact us. So if you just email me, I can send you a PayPal invoice. Um, you do the PayPal invoice. We set up a delivery pickup time, estimated ship dates right now, I think are five weeks, maybe six weeks from the time you pay for your bagger. So, because when you pay it, we order the parts. When we order the parts, we have to wait for them to come in. We are trying to keep them on bulk, but like I said, parts are kind of hard to find these days, guys. So, getting on the list early is, is better because the earlier you get on the list, the better, the faster you'll have it. Um, but uh, he is trying to make like a big stock of them. He hired someone recently. They are pre-making baggers the best they can. They're making templates and got the CNC that they're working with. So, yeah. But we do want to have it on the website very soon. Is it possible to make people sick off my mushrooms that I grow? I figure the mushrooms grow, it's not contaminated. I mean, if you see a lot of bacterial blotch or a lot of problems like that, you might have some problems. Um, I don't know that, I've never made anyone sick, but you know, look, just look at it. If you wouldn't eat it, don't, don't sell it. Um, you know, and, and that's just, um, sorry. just always be very strenuous and keep your standards high. And, uh, you know, no, I mean, a mushroom can be contaminated if it grows. Now, if it grows and it looks nice, you don't see mold on it, then it's fine, typically. But if it starts browning, um, then you probably don't want to sell the cluster. If it's uh, moldy, obviously, you don't want to sell it. So, you know, just things like that. It's pretty common sense stuff. The blue bruising liver decide asking about is probably, I know, I know, Jen, which is why I wasn't saying it. Sorry, the stream must have skipped. I watched it a few times and thought you missed it. No worries, Jake. Absolutely no worries, man. It, 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 it's going to be hard to offend me. I might seem offended. I don't get offended, guys, even if I seem it. How long do you let your... Well, it takes a lot. <laughs> How long do you let your trough run and at what temp? Uh, so for 120 12-pound bags... Uh, we do a 24-hour run. For 170 12-pound bags, we do a 36-hour run. Um, always 12 hours at uh, 9 kilowatts, and the rest of the time is always done at 4.5 kilowatts. Uh, I don't know temperatures. I don't, I don't measure my temperatures anymore. Uh, we just always do it by time. And the kilowatts is just because we have two, kilowatt, two 4.5 kilowatt elements. One gets cut. Well, there's two running, it's nine kilowatts. One gets cut, one gets cut. There we go. Then uh, obviously it only leaves at four and a half kilowatts. Uh, tips on finding suitable employees. Well, man, we should get Jackie in here. He's left now. He was eating his lunch earlier, but uh, um, I gotta be honest, guys. I'm impressed with Jackie. He's, he's doing a really good job. I've had a lot of, I've had a, the, the, the good luck and good fortune to have access to good people most of the time. Um, it took me a little bit of time to find someone to replace Jason because um, like he, he, his, he and his wife started a business, so they're, they're off doing their thing now. Um, but it took me a while to find someone that could replace him. I mean, it, just, it was hard finding labor with uh, all the COVID stuff going on, all the unemployment. However, suitable employees, I will tell you that uh, try to get to know them, ask them a lot of personal questions, um, Find out if they have value similar to yours the best you can. Um, obviously, we're not talking like religion, race, sexuality, orientation, uh, gender, blah, blah, blah. Any of that political stuff I don't care about. If you come here, I will pay you to do good work. 
Um, so if you're looking for suitable employees, I mean, Facebook stalking someone, you know, just checking them out if their page is public. I, if their page isn't public, I, I usually don't hire you, you know, because if I can't check you out beforehand, I'm not going to just not going to do it. So if you want a lot of privacy, this is not the place to work because there's cameras everywhere. I do a YouTube channel. Oh, my goodness. I am going to get that floor. Um, that kind of stuff. So how many pencils do you think you can break in one minute? The world record is 98. Uh, I don't like, is it one at a time, three at a time? Cause I, I'm thinking I can do a few at a time. I don't know. Mike says, thanks. Were you able to send out the LC lids today? Uh, we shipped out a bunch of LC lids today. I don't know if yours were the exact ones or not. I'm sure they, they were in the list. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I know I printed off a bunch of postage and a bunch of lids went out today. So I think yours is out, but uh, I'll have to double check that, Mike, and I'm not where I can double check where I'm in the YouTube studio and doing the live stream. Um, Jake, aside from shiitake, are there any other popular edible species you would not recommend side fruiting? Um, I don't, not, not really, not that I know of. Now, that said, I mean, there's plenty of species that I don't have a lot of experience with, like the milky mushroom, I haven't tried fruity wine cap. Um, I like chestnut side fruited. I like ericium side fruited. I like oyster side fruited. Uh, portobellos and buttons probably would, shouldn't be side fruited. Um, I can't think of anything else just off the top of my head. I'm not sure though. Abraham says, how many days need to be disrupt liquid culture? I stir my liquid culture every day. And are you testing your liquid culture before you use them in house? So I don't test my liquid culture before I use it. I test my liquid culture alongside using it. So I injected my, my grain master because grain masters are easy and cheap to make. Um, and then I put a few drops of that same, same syringe on some agar dishes. If my agar dishes grow in faster than my grain masters typically, and if I see a lot of bacteria and stuff, in my agar, but not on my grain master, then I know my grain master's probably got an underlying bacterial infection and not to use that liquid culture. Um, otherwise, I just go forward and I use that grain spawn. So if I if it looks contaminated, I just dump it out. What size heating element do you use in your sterilizers and what do you use barrels? How many bags do you fit? So they're just hot water heating, uh, hot water heater elements, uh, four and a half kilowatts each uh, on the 220 voltage. 240, whatever, 220, I can't remember now. Um, and what do you use? I use a trough. So I use a barrel for my, we use a barrel for our, um, boiler. There we go. I could not think of the word, guys. Yeah, my brain just stopped working. Uh, I use a 55 gallon drum for my boiler and a 300 gallon trough for my steam chamber. And I can fit 120 12 pound bags in it easy 170 if we really squeeze them in that's a hard cook it's not always perfect it's hard to get keep it up at temperature you have to really make sure it's insulated etc can you inadvertently create a new strain that is poisonous not to my knowledge jen um i really don't know how that would even be possible maybe but i don't think so i never had deep fried oyster they look amazing how are they they are freaking amazing holy crap they are freaking amazing that said, I'm trying to stay away from a bunch of deep fried food because my physique is going downhill ever since I stopped lifting weights through COVID. I used to have that strong man physique, a little belly, but mostly a muscle belly. And now I'm just getting a belly. Beer gut. Don't like it. Cultivation of my Taki. Where's the best place to get genetics yield? So um, I have a really good my Taki strain that I've, I've got. I've got two strains. One is from. Ryan Paul Gates of Terrestrial Fungi. I highly recommend Ryan at all costs. Ryan is the man. Um, the second person that I got my talkie from was Mike Tyson. M-Y-C Tyson. Um, and both of those strains, both Ryan's, Ryan's is growing in well. It has not fruited for me yet, but I've only had it for a few weeks. Um, 
the maitake of trials I've been doing, I've been doing with Mike Tyson's strain, and it's kicking butt. So I know, I know that one's a good one. But, like I said, Ryan Paul Gates is the man, so any strain he's got is a good strain. But he's more of a cordyceps man these days, I think. Cordyceps and reishi. Do you sell the wholesalers? If so, is there a dramatic difference in price? There is a dramatic difference in price. Um, so the wholesalers I know around here pay about $3, $3.50 per pound for oysters. They want the same type of oyster. They don't really want a variety. Um, and the when I pay, when I sell to restaurants, I get $8 a pound. Um, I've never sold to a wholesaler. I know a lot of guys do. And we have talked about possibly doing it, but at that point we're just competing with ourselves. If we're doing direct to restaurant sales and wholesalers. Then why, why are we, you know, we're just competing with, our, with each other. Plus when I sell through a wholesaler, um, I lose control of my product. Uh, ben actually talks about this. He's got a, a blog post series he's working on. He's actually working on the third one nowadays because life's been crazy. It's taken a while, but mycological warfare part one and part two on our website. Um, I also wrote one called Working Backwards, The Importance of Working Backwards. Uh, all three of those articles or are, are blog posts are I, very good, I think, for when you're starting out. But Mycological Warfare is specifically talking about this explosion of mushroom farms and kind of where we see – where ben and, like, ben and I have discussions about the marketplace and where we think mushrooms are going. And that whole – those two posts are just about where we think the, the mushroom market is going. And we do talk about wholesalers in there. Ben does. I mean. Do oats take longer to colonize than rye? I think I think they do a little bit, but not much. I mean, it's a day or two. So so just check the agar plates. I started a few days ago. There is contamination. I set a plate for about five minutes in front of the filter. It is fine. How do you do the water agar? Um, well, bearded, uh, let's see. So water agar is just uh, 20, or sorry, uh, Ten grams agar agar to five hundred milliliters water. That's it. Period. Uh, just cook it like normal. You just remove the ten grams of sugar. Any advice on what uh, fifteen psi for thirty minutes is what I do for my agar. Any advice on what to look for as far as business insurance goes when selling to restaurants and at farmers markets? Um. So yeah. Um. So the only, I mean, I've got liability. Um, what have I got? Half a million in liability? 750000 in liability? million and a half? I'd have to look at it. Uh, I just, I mean, I basically have just liability insurance. So uh, the good news is that restaurants, when you're serving at restaurants, the restaurant's insurance covers most of that for you. You're the farmer, but it is up to them to make, like once you, they have it in hand, they're going to have to prove that it was that your mushrooms hurt somebody, um, not their handling of those mushrooms, not their storage of those mushrooms. Typically, when the restaurant buys the mushrooms from you, they take on that liability for you. That said, direct to the sales to the farmer's markets, I've never had an issue with a complaint um, ever. That said, you do want to carry some liability insurance. You, what you're going to want to do is go somewhere like State Farm and find a branch that specifically – uh, will do weird cases like mushrooms. Like I cannot go, my father owns an insurance agency. Number one, we're family. But number two, he can't do a mushroom farm. Um, we have to go through someone for a year uh, with a specialty insurance provider before we could ever go through his agency. You know, that kind of thing. You can check me out and you might learn something. What? What? Are you talking to somebody? Are you talking to me? Uh, okay, Rich. I'm sure you can learn me something. I learn something from people all the time. Do you ever try supplemented poplar sawdust for growing mushrooms? I have not, Zoltan, but I've heard that it's really good. I, I don't have any experience with it, but I know some people that have, and they liked it. So. Um. Do you have a video on knocking up blocks of spawn and then exactly how you fruit them once ready? I mean, I think I've, I mean, most of my early videos are basically just that. Uh, I don't think that I have a recent one. I can do a recent. I can do like basically an updated, basically updates of my older videos on how we do stuff now. 
Are you are UV zapping lights a good solution for fungus gnats? I have not found them to be so. I found the sticky traps that you can get at like Walmart. Just the regular fly traps are easily the best way to control fungus gnats. That and removing blocks early and often so that they don't even get the fungus gnat population built up in them. Uh, let's see. So guys, it's been like an hour. My throat's starting to get a little scratchy. I'm going to go through these questions. Um, we're going to give it a little bit longer, but just so you know, I'm going to be wrapping up fairly soon just because um, the sinus infection has actually hindered my ability to, to communicate with you guys more than I thought it would. Yeah. But if I have extra spawn that is nearing the end of its life, can I spawn my bags more heavily and cut back on holes for that batch? Any benefit to, do it, to doing that? Yeah, I'd say you could. Um, and you may not even have to cut back on your, your holes. Uh, any benefit to doing that? Your blocks will grow in faster. In fact, we always over spawn whenever we're short on blocks because it helps us get there faster. So... Can you tell why you stir the LC every day? Uh, yeah, it, 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 uh, for one thing, it shreds the mycelium and makes it constantly have to regrow in 3D, right? So you take mycelium, it's grown together, you shred it apart. Now both of these clusters grow. And each one of these clusters grow, you know, back out, you shred it again, and it does it over and over and over again. And what you're doing is encouraging it to grow not on a 2D surface on the bottom or the top of the water, but rather to grow in a 3D surface. Um, now, beyond that, you're also aerating the liquid. As the mycelium consumes oxygen in the liquid, it's releasing carbon dioxide. Much like a fish tank where you got that bubbler stirring the water, getting the CO2 out, uh, it's the, basically the same thing. You're stirring it, hoping to remove some of the CO2, to speed it up, to move the water around. So, uh, how many of your strains are wild finds and where you got your king blue oyster strain from? So, I bred my king blue oyster strain. It is a elm and a blue crossed together. Um, the wild finds I have, I've got a ton, most of them not listed, uh, a bunch of them about to be listed as they are right now in grain being planted into blocks for tests and photos for the website. So I've got a lot of wild strains, but I also do a lot of breeding. So, and I prefer, you know, having a lot of strains that I have bred, um, just because I don't know, I like, I like growing my own. At Fred, I stir my LCs every day to break up the mic and try and get more dissolved gases into the water, encouraging more growth. Yeah, Gunny's got it. Gunny, is that your name or your rank? Speaking of lifting weights, ever heard of starting strength? It is a great resource for barbell training for strength. My wife isn't sure what I am more obsessed with, mushrooms or strength training. It's interesting to see there's a lot of people doing that now. Like a lot of mushrooms, uh, mushrooms and strength training together. In fact, I read uh, some articles on bodybuilding, and apparently the mushrooms are starting to be used a lot in bodybuilding because of their high amino acid content, vitamin mineral content, which makes absorption of proteins and everything else that build muscle much better. And they did uh, a blind study. I think people who consumed oyster mushrooms every day recovered better, or maybe three times a week or something like that. But anyways, they recovered better than the people who didn't. And uh, that's a very interesting study, I think. That said, to answer your question on the starting strength, I don't know that one uh, very well. I know strength first. I do a lot of kettlebell stuff. I haven't done a lot of barbell training. Um, I got some really heavy kettlebells. I did go in for some barbell training the other day and was really surprised because what I thought I'd be able to press based on I can press, you know, th this weight with this hand and this weight with this hand. That means that those two weights together should be that, Right. And I was actually able to lift more than that. So I can do more on a barbell than I can with the kettlebells, um, which is, was an interesting thing for me. Do you have any experience fruiting bags outdoors? I know people who have had success small scale. Yeah, I mean, you have, man, just under trees. Under trees with misters. Weather's got to be on your side. Temperature's got to be on your side. Lighting, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, you can absolutely do it. I used to do it out in the woods. When I first started growing mushrooms, I didn't really have a good grow room. So I had a greenhouse that I bought on clearance at Tractor Supply out in the woods behind my house. And then I would grow on a shelf in my house all year long. And then in the spring and fall, and sometimes the winter, I would grow in that mushroom tent outside. Summertime, I always had to shut it down. So summer has always been my hardest season. Uh, let's see. Have you ever tried using just straw in bags for growing oysters? I have. Uh, and yeah, it worked great. I just hate how much labor straw is. So. 
where mushrooms are going, right to the moon and beyond. I agree, Lance. And whenever I go to Mars, they'll be going to Mars with me. I will have the sewage dome on Mars. Or no one will. How do you feel about your substrate bag sizes? Is there an ideal size for different purposes or species? Uh, so, Fred, to be honest, it's never been a, a thought of... So, five-pound bags are more efficient. You get more pounds of mushrooms per pound of substrate out of a five-pound bag than you will out of a 10-pound bag. I've seen it over and over and over again. You will get more mushroom per pound of substrate out of a smaller bag. That said, your labor is twice as much and does not be, is not recouped in the amount that you get. As far as ideal size, I have not run into anything that has shown me an ideal size. I mean, uh, I've not really seen a big difference in anything on that other than... Um, like I said, the, the, the yield difference. But doing a 10-pound bag or even a 12-pound bag reduces your labor per pound of substrate, increasing your profit per pound of substrate, which is really what you're after. You know, if you're growing mushrooms for fun, then that's mushrooms for fun, and you, do, you can make whatever standards you want. If you're growing it for a business, you are looking for profit to man hours and materials you know, basically profit to cost. Um, for stocking some, stocking someone, Bridge, you can check me out and you might learn something for stocking someone. I have no idea what you mean, Rich. I'm sorry, man, I'm trying. Hey, Drew, important question. What do you think about using professional brewer's yeast in your substrate and or your rye berries? Um, I mean, I, I do some yeast in my grain spawn. So obviously that, that works pretty well, I think. You know, you just do it before you sterilize. So when you sterilize, it's all dead. Um, Uh, when selling your medis when you're selling your mushrooms, do you pitch the medi med Oh my gosh! When selling your mushrooms, do you pitch the medical properties? Hell, if I can speak, huh? Um, no, I, I never do. It's always flavor. It's always taste. It's why you would want to eat this thing. I never, I never handle medicinal. I've always stayed away from it. I've always seen it as more of a liability. That is not my marketplace. Um, I just try to stay in my lane as far as gourmet. And some of my strains are very helpful. Um, I have a medicinal bulk pack, but that is because so many people were requesting it that I made one up after really reading a bunch of stuff. That said, you'll see even on the medicinal bulk pack, I make no claims whatsoever, just that these are traditionally used medicines. That's it. Because, um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't, that's not my lane. Gourmet is my lane and that's what I enjoy. And that's kind of why I stay there. But, uh, Gareth, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, there are studies that show that eating oyster mushrooms um, helps lower cholesterol and lower blood pressure. It is pretty good for your heart. Wood ear, we know, is like eating wood ear is about like taking baby aspirin, you know, that kind of thing. And we have a scientific data for all of that. So it's all pretty safe to say. That said, someone should talk to their doctor before, you know, doing anything like that. That's the way I look at it. Do you have an idea of how to transfer from grain spawn? to substrate without a HEPA filter. Still airbox, maybe other ideas. So try an open air transfer. Clean your room, uh, wherever you're at. Go in and turn the ventilation off to that room. Like you can just close the vent. Let it sit still, still for 30 minutes. If you can, you can always go get a HEPA filter from Walmart, little $30 HEPA filter, you know, um, sits there and have it just constantly scrubbing the air near the room. Um, or in there near the door or whatever. And then just don't have it flowing over your work service is my, my thought. And then you go in there and just do your bags right there. Do it quickly. Uh, try not to stir up a bunch of air. You can always do what we call a bleach bomb. I don't like doing that with no ventilation, so don't do that. But um, a bleach bomb is, I mean, you can even like sterilize water, put sterile water in a sterile sprayer, and then walk backwards, misting as that water falls, it collects everything. Then you go through and you clean your work surface with like alcohol. And then you can just right there, open air transfer. And I have seen, seen people do that with some success. 
you do have a higher contamination rate, but so long as your contamination rate is low enough that you're still making a profit, that's really what you want. So, Yo, you're very welcome, Shumarella. Oh, Romania. Very cool. I like your name, by the way. Just a nickname. Uh, I don't live in the U.S., but I do plan on enlisting in my country's army. Gotcha. I didn't know. You know, Gunny's a, a rank in the Marine Corps, so. What do you, that's basically, you know, that's the most feared rank in the Marine Corps. Joe Choi, what's up, bud? What are your thoughts on blocks that are still producing heat? Are they ready or not ready to fruit when they still feel warm, or do you just go by schedule? I just go by schedule. I don't go by temp. I don't really look at things too hard. Um, we almost just always go by schedule. If, if that block is not ready according to schedule, it, you know, there might be a slight difference, and that's, that's just fine. But um, otherwise, if it's way off base from its schedule, then there's probably something wrong with the block, and it just needs to be tossed. I can get poplar sawdust almost free. Please tell me more about it. 60% sawdust, 40% wheat bran for stocky, 80-20 for oysters. Um, I mean, I would do 60-40 for both oysters and shiitake. Uh, I don't really have anything else other than it grows in fast and doesn't produce quite like a hardwood does, uh, is my understanding. But I've never used poplar sawdust. I mean, we've got a ton of two poplars here, but I've just never used it. Stalking? Probably what he meant. For, for stalking someone. What? You can check me out and you might learn something for stalking someone. Rich, I'm not sure what you're meaning, man. Um, I hate to see you go, but Modern Survivalist with Matt Bracken is on around 30 minutes. Great timing. Great YouTube channel. Check it out. Aloha Northern. It's damn Yankees. <laughs> Thanks, Lance. <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah, I'm not sure, man. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's going on there. I have recently joined your channel and saw a lot of your videos and saw you change opinion about liquid culture being used for commercial operations. Yeah, Ferris, that, that was a big thing for me. I definitely did. I definitely changed it. And I want you guys to know when I change my information. Um, I did see that I got a comment, something like, uh, look at this idiot. Uh, first he was telling people not to use liquid culture, and now he acts like he invented it. By the way, I think every time I've made a liquid culture video, I've always referenced uh, Peter McCoy's radical mycology as an influence. Uh, I did not invent liquid culture. I did invent uh, the needle biopsy from agar, at least on my own. I'm sure other people have done it. I just hadn't seen it published anywhere else first. And I have still haven't seen it published anywhere else first. Um, I definitely did the through the grain tech and I've never seen that either, even heard something like it. So don't know what he means. I made small improvements, I think, to liquid culture, but I have not invented liquid culture. So whatever. Um, how do you breed mushrooms, Gareth? So it's basically, it's, it's really easy. Just take a spore print and a spore print. Take an agar dish. Once you got your spores on those right there, you take a, uh, a inoculation loop or your scalpel. In fact, the easiest way is with the scalpel. You take your scalpel, you scrape, after it's flame sterilized, you cut it through the agar, you scrape one spore print with one side of your scalpel, the back side of it, scrape one spore print with the other spore print with the other side of your scalpel, and then just cut into your agar dish, and you're going to leave spores of both sides, of both types, in those cuts. They grow out. Mmm. Facebook stalking. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you, Rich. I am so sorry, man. I was trying to figure out what you meant. But like I said, my brain is mush and I'm kind of a dummy right now. But this this sinus infection's got me feeling stupid. Um But yeah, Gareth, that's the easiest way. Once you have that, um, you can then sector out each time like you'll see the growth patterns and you'll see where the mushrooms are not fusing together, the mycelium, and you just cut those out and replate those and then grow them like normal. There you go. You're very welcome, Joshua. Can liquid culture be used directly for substrate from a commercial point of view? Ferris, I have not ever had good luck with that, so I don't really know. Hey, what's up, Dune? It's been forever. Hey, Dune. Uh, we were just, I was just talking. <coughs> Excuse me. We we're about towards 20,000. We were actually about to do another giveaway for when we hit 20,000. And uh, it's funny that you're on here now, the winner of the last one. <laughs> Give me one second, guys. It's the wife. Hey, baby, I've got you on speakerphone with the live stream. 
<laughs> she says hello live stream, and so do my kids. Uh, you want me to take you off live stream? <laughs> what? Okay. They must be on their way. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Hey, Andrew. Hello from Donegal, Ireland. Loving the channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate that. Sean Shields. I like that. That's a good name. Alcohol versus bleach for sanitation. Uh, I use alcohol as a sanitizing agent. I prefer alcohol to bleach. Uh, that said, bleach works really well, to, particularly if you can keep it on there, like put stuff in it, let it sit for a while. You can press more with a barbell because the bar tying your hands together adds stability, if that makes sense. That does make a lot of sense because with the kettlebell, you got to use a lot of those small muscles to keep it straight. And I guess when you've got the bar there, I'm able to use my big muscles to control. So I'm able to do more weight. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I will tell you that back squats to me are far easier than front squats with a, like a goblet squat. Um, man, goblet squats with the cattle, like a heavy cattle kettlebell is atrocious. So, um, the stalking guy was probably talking about the Facebook stalking when you hire someone. That wasn't my intention. I was just making an intro for my question. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. From your uh, uh, earlier one. Um, let's see. How's the new shop coming along? Man, it's coming in great. Uh, it is full. We don't even. We're putting in our walk-in now. Ben's actually started uh, cleaning up all the panels and getting them ready. So, you know, we bought those out of a farm in Atlanta. We just like ripped them out and then brought them with us. Um, and so we're installing the walk-in right now. We've got the AC guy coming. We've got the five-ton unit in place. Um, so we've got a lot of stuff going on towards that. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's uh, the shop's coming in crazy. Like it's it's uh, going like it's it's just building. That's getting out of control. I'm having a hard time keeping up with everything. Like I don't even know half of what's going on half the time because everybody's working on their specific project. And yeah, it says you're my spirit animal. Well, kind of, but not really. But you rock. Thanks for everything. Always rockstar. You're very welcome, Lance. And thank you. Um, the call. Um, the call. What do you mean? Um, the call. Hey, buddy, Captain Mushroom here. The mother of pearls are delicious. Hey, hey, awesome, Vance. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> glad to hear that they're doing well for you. I love those mother of pearls. They're one of my favorites. I'm glad we could finally get your order taken care of on that one. I know that was kind of weird. How concentrated should the peroxide be to kill off the spores but not kill off the mycelium? Martin, I don't have the answer to that question off the top of my head. Um, I would Google that. Uh, you can look up uh, peroxide, kill spores. Um, it is, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to guess cause I'll be wrong. Thanks Lance. Uh, thanks for answering my questions, man. And I love the channel. I have one more question. Do you know of any decent LC or grain spawn suppliers in the UK? Gareth, I don't, um, I really don't. I don't know market in the UK very well. I've been thinking about trying to develop some business ties in the UK and, uh, be able to just like learn the networks over there, like the mushroom networks. Cause I know people eat mushrooms in, in England and um, I don't know if Ireland and Scotland's very mushroom heavy. Scott I've always heard the Scots Irish were uh, not saying that Scots Irish is the same as Scottish and Irish. I am Scots Irish, which is particularly a border Scot that lived in the Ireland plantation or whatever, and then moved here. But uh, I don't, I know that my people, we're very mushroom phobic, so I don't know if this, how the Scottish are towards mushrooms these days. Um, I wish I could help Gareth. I'm sorry, man. I, I'll, I'll try to look into it at some point, but uh, with everything else going on, man, it's probably going to slip my mind at some point. And I'll do my best. Christian says, question, I'm using quart jars and plan on moving into spawn bags. What's the conversion of how many quarts in a five-pound bag? I mean, you can do a light dusting from a quart jar. Uh, I use half gallon jars these days, but uh, I mean, a quart jar can do, I, I've done, quart jar holds about one pound of spawn. If you've got um, 10 five pound bags, that's 50 pounds. You can do a one to 3% spawn rate, rate. So, I mean, you can do 20. Um, now, what is it? You could do out of a hundred pounds, 20 times five is a hundred. Yes. Yeah, so you could do 25 pound bags 
out of one quart jar if you really wanted to. That's really, you know, pretty thin, but I mean, I go pretty thin on, on my spawning these days. Find that less is more. You're very welcome, Martin. Glad I could help. Sent an email about the mentor program a few days ago. Probably got lost in the mess of emails. Is there any better way to reach out to you? Uh, yeah, the business phone is 865-742-6521. Just text me. What's the longest period of time you would store your mushrooms before selling them? Uh, three days, roughly. Uh, most, uh, most of the time I want to... Oh! Felt that bounce off my hand. Um... But yeah, three days is about all it would take because I don't like oyster mushrooms stay good for about two weeks in the fridge. If they go through a distributor, you're talking like they've been in there a week before they get to the restaurants. If you can get like only if you get same day pick mushrooms to a restaurant, they see them when they're still beautiful, not a week later. That is absolutely the way to go. So what is the uh sorry, yep, you high stone. Any tips on best? time to harvest mother of pearls. I noticed they really didn't gain weight if I let them go longer. Yeah, so it depends if you're selling them by weight or or not, but I always let them get to where they look just a little too old for other oysters. And I find that that seems to produce really well for me. Um, I sell by volume, so I like my mushrooms to be a little bigger. Um, for one thing, I feel like <clears throat> the texture is better when they're slightly bigger. You don't want them to go too far or they'll get soft but uh, I want them to just start to get a little soft and that texture is just so much better to work with, I feel like. Um, as far as weight gain, no, I mean, you always wanna find, you always wanna try to pick and then find when they're at their heaviest if you're selling by weight. Um, either that or, you know, find some medium between quality that your chefs like, that you like, and that weight gain. But that's gonna be kind of an up to you thing to sit there and like bounce back and forth and figure out Talk to your chefs a lot, you know, bring them samples of that mushroom. Um, but uh, as far as an answer from me, like when they've turned really white, when they go from that blue color to fully white, that's when they're usually really, really close to being ready. Well, guys, I don't see any more questions. So um, with that, I guess I'm going to head off here. Um, I don't know. I'll give you guys another five minutes if anybody's got questions they want to throw in the chat really quick. Well, all right. It seems like uh, unless my chat is just frozen for some reason, it seems like, uh, oh, sounds good. Thank you, Josh. I really appreciate it. If anybody has any other questions, just feel free to email me through the contact page. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll answer it real quick and then we'll end it. So I remember seeing you stashing your spent blocks outside. Have you noticed any increase in wild shrooms? Uh, we get a lot of volunteer mushrooms out there, but not a lot of anything else. Um, I will probably pick up the pack here soon, man. Thanks for the help. Thank you, Bearded. Absolutely. Um, if you need anything, just uh, email me. Let me know. Uh, my email has stayed the same ever since. Mossy Creek Mushrooms at gmail.com is easily the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, yeah. So, yeah, everyone hit that like button and uh, subscribe. That way you get alerts to whenever I go live. And, uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Oh, one more quick. Lance is saying something I'm probably interested in because it starts with Scottish. Scottish, Irish, my last name is the clan that guards the moors between Ireland and Scotland. I knew there was something I liked about you. <laughs> there you go. So Reed, uh, there's a place in uh, northern England right there on the border. It's Reedsdale. Uh, I've looked it up on Google. You do street view, and it looks a lot like this place, man. And that is where my family's from is Reedsdale. So um, a beginner is BRF, a waste of time. Go straight to Martha Fruiting Chamber. Yes, 42. That is the way I feel. And with that, guys, have a great day. Please hit that thumbs up. Heck, I don't know. Hit that thumbs down. It at least gets my engagement going, you know. Uh, leave a comment, you know, whenever this is over. And uh, as always, hit that subscribe button so you get notifications when anything happens. We're going to be doing a giveaway soon. It is for an unlisted Herisium bulk pack. Uh, it means 11 strains, commercial, wild, Comb tooth, lion's mane, conifer coral, bear's head. We've got it all in that pack. So be on the lookout. Subscribe so you see when that notice goes up. Because we are almost at 20,000 subscribers. So with that, guys, I love you all. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Be good. Appreciate it.